Hello, today is Wednesday, February the 16th, 2022. My name is Father Howard Giles. And I'm Deacon Aaron Giles of Jesus the Good Shepherd Anglican Church in Henderson, Nevada. And we're here to talk about uh, World Mission Sunday. So World Mission Sunday was started by uh, Archbishop Bob uh, Duncan. Right, it was one of the new, uh, new things added to the Anglican Church in North America liturgical calendar, and uh, Bishop Bob Duncan wanted to make sure that mission was at the front and center of the Anglican Church in North America's agenda. So he asked that we celebrate that um, and during the season of the Epiphany, which is a time to remember God's showing forth to the Gentiles and to the nations, and the Church's call to go forth to the nations, to the Gentiles, uh, and to our local communities as well. And that really worked well for us because we were founded in the same year that the Anglican Church in North America was in 2009. Uh, we actually uh, predate the ACNA by just a couple of months, right? Right. So as we were setting up our, our budgeting and setting up our liturgical and communal life together, um, it worked for us to make sure that mission was at the center of that. And we had already kind of done that when we had uh, made our budget, as you say, we you know, planted the church in, in 2009, and we're thinking about our budget. You know, we didn't know how much money we were going to have and who was going to be giving. And so we came up with a percentage formula. That's right. So we, we take 100% of the funds that come in. We send the first 10% to the diocese. Uh, and we did that even before we were a member of the Diocese of uh, San Joaquin. We wanted to support the mis mission and work of our bishop. At that point, Bishop John David Schofield, and now uh, Bishop Eric Manis and the work of our brothers and sisters on the Diocese of San Joaquin. So the first 10% of our budget tithe uh, goes to the Diocese of San Joaquin. And after that, we wanted to set aside 5% for mission. So I just wanted to stop you there because the tithe, I don't want to go over that too fast sure. because that's given us a chance to really talk about tithing because we practice it as a church. Uh, the tithe is, again, as Deacon Aaron said, that 10%. So if uh, we get a check from our work for $1,000, the first thing we do is write a check for 100 to the church. The same thing of Jesus the Good Shepherd. If we bring in $1,000, the first thing we do is send 100 to the diocese. That's right. That's the biblical standard of giving, and the Anglican Church in North America made that one of the, the duties of the laity, actually, in the Constitution and canons. Uh, that's an important part of being a Christian is giving thanks for what God has given us and giving back to him, which is what the tithe is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do this 5% on top of the 10%. So we're actually at Jesus the Good Shepherd every month uh, sending 15% of what we bring in out. So the first is the 10% tithe to the diocese. The next is 5% uh, mission giving. And so that's what we're celebrating on, on Mission Sunday at Jesus the Good Shepherd is the the missions that we've supported. We've done a number of different missions and a number of different percentages. Uh, it's 5% of what we get. So again, if we get uh, you know, $100, we're immediately giving five to our missions. And right now they're divided among five. So that makes it easy, 1% to each. That's, yeah. that's right. We have two missionary families, uh, one in Chile, Russ and Heidi Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been supporting them, I think since we were founded. So definitely for over 10 years, I believe. Russ and Heidi, uh, at least uh, Russ uh, grew up in Las Vegas, so um, it's really great uh, to be able to support them. They have some deep uh, Southern Nevada roots, and uh, it's just been a real blessing to have them visit. Frank and Ann are in uh, North Africa, and um, they also are from our diocese, from the Diocese yeah. of San Joaquin. And so, uh, again, that's a, another local connection for us, and they've been in the mission field now for for quite a while as well. 20 been. years, I believe, and we've been supporting them for almost 10 of that. So yeah. again, long-term relationships, that was one of the commitments that we made. We wanted to, to choose uh, missionaries and mission projects that we believed in and give long-term, and that we're not having to decide every month what our giving is going to be, and they're able to depend upon the giving that we send them uh, to help and keep their them having stability, because we know that's important for, for a family and for a, a mission to be successful, it needs to have some stability. That's right. So uh, these two mission families, and then the third is? We've been giving to the Women's Resource Center of Southern Nevada, 
Uh, that's our local uh, crisis pregnancy center. And again, we've been giving to them since we founded. Uh, we support them in various ways. We've volunteered with them in the past. Uh, we give them 1% of our monthly income. We also collect uh, layout items for them a couple of times a year and other in-kind donations uh, to support their work with um, pregnant women and newly delivered women uh, who find themselves in need. And the really wonderful thing about that is that we've been able to volunteer in so many different ways. Uh, our people have gone and folded clothes and uh, some have gone and done the training uh, to be counselors and uh, we've been able to partner in lots of different ways uh, with the Women Re Women's Resource Center of Southern Nevada. So um, th those three, um, and, and I think then the, our fourth, the theological education, so giving to seminarians, um, we've had, uh, we had all of 2021. Uh, the, the fifth, we, we changed uh, midway through so what was our giving to those four? And this is a record year of giving for Jesus the Good Shepherd. So just under $3,000 um, each. So $2,999.65 went to uh, Father Frank and Anne, as we said, missionaries in North Africa, to Father Russ and Heidi, missionaries in Chile, and to the Women's Resource Center, Medical Center of Southern Nevada, along with in-kind giving that also went to Women's Resource Medical Center of Southern Nevada. And we pray for them every Sunday uh, during the prayers of the people, and we ask our people to pray for them daily. So we try to keep this uh, front and center at Jesus the Good Shepherd that we're supporting these missionaries. Another commitment that we've made is to support theological education. That's where we've had the most variance. Uh, we try to support seminarians from our diocese. So we've helped, I think, a total of now four or five seminarians with direct aid. Mm -hmm. And then when we're not, um, didn't have a seminary, we supported one of the theological schools of the um, Anglican Church in North America. We want to make sure that we're investing in the next generation of clergy who are going to be shepherds for our um, our people in the future, our children and grandchildren, that, that we will have um, well-educated and theologically sound clergy. And again, that's just one of these uh, you know, every day, every year practices of giving that we have in support of theological education. The fifth mission uh, in 2021 was just a real uh, wonderful surprise, and that was the restart of Christ Church in Reno. And uh, the church in Nevada has historically been kind of spread thin, and uh, it is uh, very difficult sometimes to plant and to establish those deep roots. Those folks uh, just uh, popped back up like a, a wonderful desert shrub, and I believe are flowering. And so we had the opportunity to come alongside them and to give them some financial support as well. So here we have these five, uh, these five areas of giving, uh, our two missionary families, the Women's Resource Center, Theological Education, and Christ Church Reno. And again, this is every month uh, when you know our funds come in and our bookkeepers balance the books and we see how much we brought in, we're sending that 5% that out every month, so a check every month to these groups. One of the most exciting things for me about it being a percentage like that is that as our, we're blessed and our income increases, we're able to give more. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we have a set amount. Um, it's been wonderful months that we've had you know, um, larger giving and we've been able to, to give more to these missions. It's just really exciting. It really is. That makes it fun. It makes uh, tithing fun for us, right? We know that when, when our tithe is uh, going out, uh, that, that we're, we're supporting and, and blessing others. The, the last thing that we do in giving is almsgiving, you know, offerings above the tithe. And that, again, since our uh, founding has been given to the Anglican Relief and Development Fund. We'll put a link in the notes of this uh, video to ARDF. We can't, uh, you know, encourage Anglican churches around the world enough to support um, this fantastic project. Uh, we spent a lot of years praying for and, and uh, giving to the Good Shepherd School in Juba, South Sudan, to some of the other projects around the world. Um, these last couple of times we've been giving to the Joseph's Fund, uh, which is ARDF's plan to um, do fundraising before uh, some of these natural disasters strike. So rather than waiting for there to be a hurricane and then having to hurry up and try to fundraise, we're saying we know there's going to be disaster. We know that there's going to be um, need and uh, that it's going to strike suddenly. And out of the wisdom of Joseph and his time in Egypt, we're saying let's store up for those times. And so um, 
Boy, we gave uh, a, a record number again, I think, to that. Just out of these mic boxes, um, I was going to have one uh, handy to show everybody, but what did we give to Air DF last year? $1,635.54. So that's change that folks have collected in their in their mite boxes, um, and it, it adds up together. And the other thing to me about the Joseph Disaster Relief Fund is that um, that way our giving is not driven by the media or anything else. It's driven by the church and the need of the church so that ARDF has funds ready to go. And if a church around the world or around the country um, is in need, they can apply for that funding right away. And it doesn't matter if it's made CNN uh, or not. The, the church is ready to meet the needs of our brothers and sisters in Christ because we know they're there and we want to be able to help them. And those monies are sent directly to the local church. So the local church then is meeting the needs of their community. So we're helping our brothers and sisters share the gospel, share the love of Christ uh, by giving these these funds. So uh, to me, you know, in, in now 13 years at Jesus the Good Shepherd and all the ups and downs, all the ebb and flow uh, of uh, life in a small church, uh, this is still one of those things that I am as passionate about today as I was 13 years ago, our mission giving and um, our, our alms giving and the love that we're able to show uh, day in, day out, and the, the way that it allows us to, to really talk about the tithe, not as a, as a duty or something that we're forced to do, but as a giving that's done out of love and our response to Christ and his love for us. So um, thank you all for your generosity. Thanks to the people of Jesus the Good Shepherd, everybody that's given. Uh, this was a wonderful year in 2021, and we really look forward to 2022 and seeing what the Lord does here in this green pasture. Blessings.